Hi everyone, it's Maya from Green Plate Special, and um, I'm here today to talk to you about fermentation, which is a form of preservation. So when we talk about preservation, we're talking about making something last longer than we typically think it would. So if I were to leave a lemon sitting out here on the kitchen counter for a few weeks, what would start to happen to it? It'd start to grow mold and it might not be so good to eat anymore. It would start to rot. So instead, I can preserve that lemon. And there are a few different methods of preservation that we like to talk about and that we like to do together at Green Plate Special. We're gonna talk about a couple of them today with these fermented items I have up here. Um, some of the other ways are dehydration. So when we dry out our hot chili peppers and then we can grind those into chili powder that we use throughout the winter. You can dehydrate fruit as well. Um, we can think about freezing things. So um, we love to freeze our tomatoes, extra tomatoes from the summer and make salsa in the winter time. That's really special. Then we also love to make pickles at Green Plate Special. And pickles use a brine. And all a brine is, is just a mixture of salt and water. And so for a pickle, you would make that brine separately and pour it over your cut cucumbers, and then leave that jar out or can it in a hot water bath. Um, <clears throat> and then you can also use a brine um, that you create naturally from the vegetable itself. And something like that would be what I have in these two jars right here. Um, they're hiding under this dish towel because we need to allow oxygen to continue to get into our jar, but we don't want to let any other types of bugs or anything like that get into our jar. So in these jars, we've got some sauerkraut that's fermenting. Sauerkraut is made primarily from cabbage. There is also leek in here and there's also caraway seeds. This was made about a week ago, so you can see that some bubbles are starting to form on the top. So for something like sauerkraut, you are gonna add a bunch of salt to your cabbage and then press it down, and then it will naturally release the water that is in the cabbage itself. And that is what creates the brine, as opposed to pickles where you create the brine separately. You can make this style of fermented veggie with carrots, with beets, with other types of, um, like a red cabbage, for example, or a Napa cabbage. This was used, we used a green cabbage for this one. So that's our sauerkraut. Um, and then also thinking about just adding salt to a vegetable and nothing else, we've got some preserved lemons in this jar. Um, and for this preserved lemon recipe, all you need is salt and you're gonna add it to a lemon that you've cut this way and that way. So kind of a crisscross lemon so that it opens up like this, but it stays together at the bottom. You add a bunch of salt to it and you press it down and it's gonna release a lot of lemon juice. And that is what you see in this jar here. So just like our sauerkraut, our lemons, we also wanna try and keep submerged in its own liquid here so that it can preserve and it can continue to ferment. And for to use this um, kind of preserved lemon, typically you would only use the outer skin. So you can rinse it off in, in, under the sink and scrape out the insides and then slice up the skin. And it's really delicious in um, some veggie dishes, meat dishes, you can put it in a salad dressing. So super yummy. So we've got our kraut, we've got our preserved lemons. Here, we've got something that's a little bit different. So in this jar, we've got a sourdough starter. And all you need for a sourdough starter is flour and water, equal parts of each. And then you set it out on the shelf. What happens when you set it out on the shelf? Well, it's gonna capture some of the natural yeast that exists in the air all around us, which is a microscopic fungus. And it's gonna start to um, consume the sugar, the carbohydrate that's in the flour, and then as a byproduct, it will start to produce bubbles and it will start to capture other good bacteria and lactobacilli that is all around us all the time. Um, and it will start to get sour and add more nutrients into it. And then you can use this to bake bread and you'll see a recipe for some sourdough bread as well on our website.
And the last fermented product that we're going to talk about right now is kombucha, which is a fermented beverage made of tea and sugar. And um, for our kombucha, it's made with what is called a SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. And um, you could actually take out the SCOBY that is in here. The mother SCOBY is what's on the bottom, and then it creates a baby SCOBY on the top. And same sort of deal, it is consuming sugar that was added to the tea, and then it will also capture good bacteria that's good for your digestive system and your immune system as well. And you can drink it and it only has a small trace of, of alcohol in it. Um, and so it's really tasty. And um, you can also add other specialty ingredients to it to your liking, like fresh ginger, or um, you could add berries to it. And that's our kombucha. Um, so all of these fermented items, they, preserve the main ingredient that's involved, so they make it last longer. Um, and they also make it easier to digest, and they add more nutrients to it. So, and lastly, they're really fun to make. That's all for today.